Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there a thankful heart in the house? For being so good. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. Just for being your son, just for being your daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We, we're honored. Hallelujah. We understand the privilege, the right that we have being sons and daughters of God. And of course, as being sons and daughters of God, he's going to take care of us. He's going to bless us. He's going to be good to us. Hallelujah. And we thank God for him. We just come to welcome you back to Community Refuge. Pray that you would just begin to set your atmosphere with praise and, and set your heart and mind with expectation. Hallelujah. Anybody got expectation this morning? You know, it may be raining outside where we are, but, but the sun is shining within us. Hallelujah. It did not drown out our expectation, but we're expecting to receive a blessing. We're expecting to receive miracles from the Lord. So we welcome you to lift your hands wherever you are. Hallelujah, to shout and fill the atmosphere with praise so that the glory and the presence of God will descend, hallelujah, and become tangible, hallelujah, and you can experience the presence and power of God. Welcome again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Man, I want to invite you all to stand as we go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to your Lord. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you came for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you, and I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Oh, 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 that's why my heart is filled with praise. And oh. I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, and I lift you up, and I magnify your name. with praise and oh my heart hallelujah and oh my mind my soul belongs to you because you paid the price for me way back on Calvary and that's why Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We worship you. 
you're good. And we bless your name for all that you've done, for your love, your mercy, your compassion. For all that you've done, oh God, we give you praise, glory, and honor for another day, for another opportunity. We thank you, oh God, that we're able to say thank you. What we're able to say, our praise is unto you. We thank you, oh God, for health and strength, for our right mind and the use of our limbs. We thank you, oh God, for covering and for keeping. We thank you, oh God, because you've kept us, hallelujah, from danger seen and unseen over the highways and on the byways. Lord, you've kept us. And we say thank you for healing us in our sickness, oh God. We say thank you. Oh, God, for giving us guidance and direction. Oh, Lord, when we needed and didn't know who where, or where to turn, oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, for this day. We thank you for those who have come into the house of worship. Hallelujah. We, we thank you, oh, God, hallelujah, for them and each and every one. And we pray that you would touch each one, oh, God, that you would hear every request in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh, God, that you would move the mountain, oh, God, that you would move the doubt, that you would move the fear, that you would move those things that are not like you, oh, God. Help us, oh, Lord. Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, oh God, hallelujah, to lean not on our own understanding, but to acknowledge you in every way, to acknowledge you in every step that we take. Hallelujah. Bless us, oh God. Hallelujah. Help us, oh Lord, to be the light that you have called us to be. Oh God, hallelujah. Help us, oh God, hallelujah, every day, oh God, to proclaim your name, oh Lord, to live the life that you have called us to live, oh Lord, to be holy, oh God, I'm a shata, to be righteous, hallelujah. Help us, oh God, we need you. Lord, someone right now is homeless. Someone doesn't have food to eat. Oh God, but we know that you are a provider. Mashita, you are a way maker in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory and we give you all of the honor and all of the praise. Hallelujah. Because you've been so good. Hallelujah. I just say thank you. I thank you, oh God, for waking me. I thank you, oh God, for keeping. I thank you for blessing my home. I thank you, oh God, because I know I have the victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have the victory over every trial. I have the victory over every sickness. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the devil is defeated. Hallelujah. And and you are exalted. I praise you. Oh God, I give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Bless your word today. Oh God, inspire someone today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we will praise you, oh Lord. And I will magnify you. And I will, oh God, give you all of the glory because you've been good to me. Hallelujah. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, oh God, for all that you've done. I praise you. Hallelujah. For all that you're going to do. I praise you. Hallelujah. For all things in Jesus' name. We thank you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus, I'll never forget. Hallelujah. What you've done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Savior. Bless your Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, I know, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. I know, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, damn. Oh, you, you brought me out of the mind. And I know you set my feet on a rock. Oh, I know you put a song in my soul. Oh, yes, a song of his praise. Hallelujah. And I know, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, damn. You are the mighty place. I know you set my feet 
on a rock to say, oh, you put a song in my soul. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, the song of your praise is hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, what you've done for me. I know, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, damn. Oh, and I've got the victory. Hallelujah. Oh, and I've got the victory. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, and I've got the victory, hallelujah. Oh, yes, I've got the victory, yes, hallelujah. Oh, and every knee shall bow, every tongue. Yes, he is Lord, he is Lord. Oh, every knee shall bow, and every tongue. Yes, he is Lord, he is Lord. Oh, Satan's defeated. Hallelujah. Satan's defeated. Oh, hallelujah. Satan's defeated. Oh, hallelujah. Satan's defeated. Oh, and every knee shall bow and every tongue. Yes, he is Lord. He is Lord. Oh, every knee shall every tongue come. That he is Lord, he is Lord. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for him. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, how you said. Oh, I know, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought. Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, no, no, never. Oh, and I will never, never forget. I will never, never forget. I will never, never forget. I will never know. Never forget. I will never, never forget. And I will never, never forget. I will never, never forget. I will never, never forget. Jesus, I'll never, Jesus, I'll. Oh, what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, yes, ever. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless your Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, You're 
scripture will be coming from Acts chapter 2 verses 12 through verse 17 and then verse 21 and it reads and they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what meaneth this and mocking said these men are full of new wine but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing that it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall be, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions 
and your old men will dream dreams. Verse 21 says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. He'll be teaching Bible study, and I'm not sure he may change his title, but what we have here is uh, Holy Spirit, what is the role? And he can correct that. He can correct that when he uh, comes up here, but please tune in on Tuesday at 7 for our hour of fellowship. And uh, yes, we'll we look for you there. Sunday, this coming Sunday, our education hour will be taught by Elder Christopher Lawrence, and that begins at 1030 next Sunday on Father's Day. And we will, weather permitting, be outside. Weather permitting will be outside next Sunday, so make sure you all guys come out to celebrate and worship with us. And Sunday is Juneteenth as well. So unless something changes, we'll be outside. And uh, as always, during the week, we have morning reflections Monday through Friday. Our prayer list is extensive, so make sure from week to week you keep one another in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests, please submit them to Bishop Rubin. He'll be sure to add you to the list. Also, please remember to uh, like, follow, and share us on Facebook as well as YouTube. And that's all I have for you. God bless in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many glad to be here this morning? I thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing us again to gather in your house. We thank you, and we are honored to be here. We thank God for his blessing, and we, I, I, I thank God for the, the, uh, the scripture reading because it was still on my heart uh, dealing with uh, Pentecost. Anybody thank God for Pentecost? I thank God for Pentecost, and I had been uh, looking at a few clips regarding um, Pentecost and the, uh, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost, and many would like to believe or infer that that uh, whole setting was about God gifting the body of Christ um, to speak language or, or the gift, having the gift of tongues. But the reference is not the gift of tongues. The reference is the gift of the Holy Ghost that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. It's like to be inferred that God used this gift of tongues to speak, or their, their um, exact language was to preach the gospel to those of another language. So they infer that, but the scriptures does not infer that. The Bible says that they heard them speaking in their language, magnifying and talking about the wonderful works of God. It was not the gospel message. He, he sent the disciples to preach the gospel, the good news. And after they spoke in tongues, 
the Bible says Peter gets up and preaches the message of the kingdom. And then he invited them in 238, we all know 238, to repent and be baptized and you can be filled also with the Holy Ghost. That was the gospel message. It was not the tongues. The tongues was glorifying God. They overheard them speaking to God, but God set it up that way so that he could speak to his people, let them know, look, this is me. This is all about me. Hallelujah. And they were ready to receive the message because they heard these people and they couldn't explain how they were hearing them. They couldn't explain it. But it wasn't the gift of tongues. It was the gift of the Holy Ghost. So uh, I, I hear people say, uh, uh, do you want to receive the gift of tongues? And, uh, and if you want to receive the gift of tongues, just start saying you got you to gotta step out in faith. You have to step out in faith and start doing what? Start saying something. Well, how, if, you, if you ask him to speak it, how are you going to say it? You're saying, I don't know how to do it. And then how are you going to do it? By faith. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that the tongues came set up on them. The tongues of fire, they could see it. And it set up on them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we don't hear the wind today, the sound today. We don't see the cloven tongues of the fire. But we show sure know that the Spirit, when the Spirit sets up on us and begin to take control of our body, and we start to speak, when I say we, I'm talking about the mechanicalism of my audibility. The Holy Ghost takes over that, and he starts to speak through me about the wonderful works of God. It is the Holy Ghost in you. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost on the inside that does the speaking. He does the talking. And I just thank God for understanding that. And, 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 and I was trying to do some a little bit more study this week on it because they want to say uh, Samaria didn't speak in tongues. Now the whole, the basis of any, uh, the premise of anything you always have to go back to where? The beginning. If you go back to the beginning, you will be able to receive and understand that Samaria did not receive the Holy Ghost. So you have to ask yourself the question, how they know they didn't have it? The scripture says that they were baptized, but he was not falling on any of them as of yet. How did they know? How they know if it, if it comes invisible, how they know that they didn't have it. Hallelujah. But when he came down, they came down from Jerusalem and they laid hand. Now, who came down? Peter and John. Who was in the upper room? Peter and John filled with the Holy Ghost. They laid hands on them. And the Bible says, don't say that they spoke in tongue. It said they received the Holy Ghost. So if they received the Holy Ghost, we know automatically what? They spoke in tongues. So we know that Simon the sorcerer saw and heard them speaking in tongues. That's what he saw. There is no other premise. That's what he saw, and he offered them money. Give me that. How? How do you know that they had it? He, he, he didn't got it. How did he know? He heard them speaking in tongues. So don't let nobody tell you, no, it comes. Don't come no other way. It comes no other way. It's the identifying that I have poured out my spirit upon all flesh. Acts 2.33 says, after God, after Jesus was at the right hand of the Father, he received the promise of the spirit and has shed forth this that ye see. Somebody say they, they saw something. And here. So you got to, it's something you're going to see in here. Hallelujah. You're going to see the Holy Ghost on somebody, and you're going to hear from the Holy Ghost in somebody. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Lord, everybody, I'm still feasting off of Pentecost. And on Tuesday night, Bishop.
taught a lesson on what now? What are we going to do now after we see and we've heard and we've rejoiced and we praised? What are we going to do now? And I think back in uh, Chronicles, the fourth chapter and the 10th verse, Jabez was asked the same question, what you going to do now? And this is what Jabez did. And it said, and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me. We want that. Don't, that's what we want after God have saved us. We want his hand to be upon us. And thou shouldest keep me, keep me, keep, keep that Holy Ghost in me. Help me keep it. You help me keep it. Yes, indeed. From evil that it may not grieve me. And, and it said, and God granted him that which he requested. And I'm encouraging you today. If you pray that same prayer that Jabez prayed, God is going to grant you your prayer. God bless you. Somebody that believes are going to receive that promise or to start thanking God. Somebody. Somebody on Facebook. Somebody on Zoom, YouTube, those sitting in this sanctuary right now. Let me ask this question. Are you expecting God to do something? Just wave a hand to him. Tell him thank you. Those that know God has made a promise to them. Those that know God has stated. I shall send the blessing. I just feel like praising God. You know, I, I get her up here Monday through Friday with the morning reflections. I look out and I don't see anybody. But I'm seeing some saints today. Men and women that love God. Men and women that trust God. Men and women that know that through the Holy Spirit, They've been empowered and they've been promised the blessings of God. Now, if God kept his promise in sending the Holy Spirit, and he kept it, he kept it, he kept it, he kept it. Why would he not keep the promise he made to you? Somebody ought to claim healing. Somebody ought to claim deliverance. Somebody ought to claim salvation. Why? Because God made a promise. And in fact, he made it simple for us to understand. If you walk up rightly before me, I withhold no good thing from you. If you abide in my word and let your word, my word abide in you, you could ask anything. I believe this. Somebody ought to ask for the impossible right now. Somebody ought to step out in faith and ask for the impossible. If it's possible, I could ask any one of you. But when it's impossible, anybody need something impossible? Come on and stand with me. Oh, I want to praise him. 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 For I'm looking for the impossible. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for these men and women. Come out today to worship, to praise, and to receive your word. But Lord, they're standing because somebody needs the impossible. Somebody needs that miracle. And I'm here by faith to say thank you for what you're about to do as we beseech you. Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace. You told us to come boldly. You told us to come to a place that we don't deserve to be at. You told us to come to a place that we don't have ever done anything to earn the privilege. But you said come boldly 
to the throne of grace. And Lord, as I look around the sanctuary and see the faces, I know they need something from you. Father, I pray right now, oh, Father, in the name of your son, we beseech you together and we thank you. Lord, as we can envision the miracle taking place, as we can envision your hand being put upon that situation, look upon this son that needs deliverance. Look upon that man that needs healing. Look upon the woman that needs comfort and guidance. Lord, no matter what it is, you are God that's able. Hashemotala. Oh, Father, I thank you right now. Let your spirit, let your anointing break every yoke. Let it destroy every yoke. Let the promise of God come to pass this day. Every believer praise him with me. Every believer, lift your voice and praise him with me. Lord, I thank you as you bless Sister Darlene Wright. I thank you as you bless Brother Joyner, Bishop Vincent. I thank you as you look upon Mother Clark. Oh, Father, I thank you for each request. The mother, the grandmother, the father, the grandpa, praying for the children and grand. Husbands praying, wives praying. Oh, do it right now. Oh, do it right now. Do it right now. And we'll praise you. We'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. As you sit down, claim the, whatever you ask God for. Tell him thank you. Now, the birthday girl is walking out the door. I want to recognize this young lady. She celebrated her birthday yesterday. She put it on Facebook, so I guess I can tell her age. 79. Praise the Lord. 79. 79. I mentioned some names in the prayer. Uh, Sister Darlene Wright. She's one that we pray with every day. Uh, about a year and a half ago, the Lord took her from hospice and just brought her to life. Uh, she is a sickle cell patient, and so she has attacks, and uh, she had an infection, and we're praying for total healing. Now, we are thanking God for young Sister Beals. Mother Beals' daughter is back out of the hospital after a sickle cell attack. And I call Bishop Vincent's name. We're praying, we're praying for him. And uh, Brother Joyner had successful uh, bypass surgery this week. We're praying for him. And we're going to continue praying for Mother Lorraine Clark, Pastor Clark's wife, that God would continue to bless and to strengthen her. And I want to say to those on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, and those in the sanctuary, uh, at the International Convocation in July, uh, our presider is going out of office, and he has served this organization extremely, extremely well. He had two terms of six years, and I guess this one's been five, five and a half, and we're going to have a dinner to celebrate his years. Now, many of you are not going to be there, but you know, you could send a, a love offering. If you go online, it will have the flyer posted. Uh, you can turn to us, we'll send it in. Because we want to make a statement to Bishop Clark. In the midst of his wife having a heart attack, having a stroke, and needing his attention in the middle of the pandemic, he has led this organization through one of the most challenging times. And so we want to honor, honor him. And certainly want to keep him in prayer. I want to certainly thank all of you that have been so supportive of this ministry. 
we look to our members through their tithes and offering to keep the church moving, to pay the light bills and electric bills and all of those bills. But you have been a blessing to us in allowing us to bless the community. And as we desire to continue to upgrade our uh, system that we can share the services on Facebook and Zoom, that's what we use your gifts for. And it's posted there, the four ways that you can give. Cash app. Isn't it an amazing cash app? Uh, people don't write checks any longer. Uh, the greeting cards company are going to get upset because you don't buy cards and put a check in it. You just go on cash app <laughs> and you type in the purpose. But our cash app is CRC Church, dollar sign CR Church, and online, communityrefuge.org. Our mail is PO Box 725. And those of us that are here, some give electronically and others uh, in person. Need to pray again? Tuesday night's class is entitled The Holy Spirit. Who is he and what is his assignment? Who is he? Now note the he, not the it. Who is he and what is his assignment? And we want to talk about that on Tuesday night. I'm hoping that Elder Williams is on the line with me because he has added such wonderful attributes that we can be looking at together. All right, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. Hebrews 10, verses 35 and 36. As Lady Rubin came up, uh, I was wondering how one person can look so beautiful every Sunday. It, it amazes me, it amazes me. I don't know where she gets all these wonderful looking clothes. Uh, I know who's paying for them. <laughs> My job is to supply the money and her job is to go shopping and to pick out such wonderful outfits. Hebrews 10 verses 35 and 36. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I'm going to give you two thoughts today. Number one, now is not the time to doubt. Number two is a testimony. Number one is an exaltation. I'm telling you, now is not the time to doubt. The second is a testimony. I'm waiting. Something good is about to happen. How many folks can testify with me? You just prayed, you just prayed, and you thank God, and you ought to be ready to just tell them, I'm waiting for something good is about to happen. Can you look at somebody and share your testimony? I'm waiting for something good is about to happen. Now, some of us need not to tell another person, but we need to tell ourselves. Kind of put your hand lightly on yourself and tell you, I'm waiting for something good. I like those two words right there. Something good. Can you say it strongly and clearly enough? Did you believe it? Something good is about to happen. The Bible is a book of life. It's not just some facts and figures. So you can say there's 66 books in the Bible, 39 old, 27 new, and 
some 40 authors and so forth and so on. It's just not facts and figures. It's a book that deals with every aspect of our lives to the point that when we read something in Scripture, it's something that we're going to deal with at one time or another. I say that because there's no temptation which is not common to man. What you deal with, you're going to deal with. Might be a slightly different presentation, but we all deal with the same overall things. So when we read scripture, so we read some things we just read and keep going, and other things catch our attention. God is saying something to me. God is making a point that's important for me to grasp, me to understand. I might not need it today, but perhaps tomorrow or the next day. But it's going to be something I need to know. It's going to be something that I need to take into my spirit. Now, when Elder Williams was up here, he made a statement. He, he heard something, so he went to the book to study to see what the book had to say about it. We need to learn how to study, to rightly divide the word of truth. Praise the Lord. You, you can't share it. You can't internalize it except you first rightly divide it. It's good to know who God is speaking to. It's good to understand the circumstances of what's being transpired, what's taking place when God said that. To try to understand the, the full message when you take a word out of context. You take a sentence, a paragraph out of context, you can get the wrong message. You need to understand what's being said. The author here is talking to those that had walked with Jesus, labored with him, and suffered. Men and women that were challenged, they were scorned, they were attacked because they proclaimed that Jesus is Lord. But in the midst of the walking with Jesus Christ, they had a high level of faith, an assurance, a confidence. When you, got, when you watch God work, it does something to your faith. When you see God moving in ways that go beyond comprehension, it does something to you. It elevates, it elevates your faith. You're seeing, you're hearing God moving. And these men and women, praise the Lord, had this level of faith. The fact is, everybody's faith is going to be challenged. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them, your faith is going to be challenged. Your faith. Any witnesses in the house? No matter how long you've been walking with God, how strong your faith is, your faith is going to be challenged. Sometimes it's going to be the enemy trying to just sift you, put his hands on you and sift you. Other times, it's just life. Other times, it's God bringing you to an even higher place. There's a place in God that God has for you. Now, God has taken you from a long way, and you can praise him and thank him. But there's even a closer place, a higher place. Because of that, Faith gets challenged. All these reasons, all these reasons. And so when the author, I'm saying the author because folks argue about who wrote Hebrews. Some say Paul, some say it wasn't Paul. I'll play it safe. The author wrote to these people of faith. Those that have been through so much. But yet they were looking for God to bless in a miraculous way. I look for miracles. When I ask, does anybody need a miracle? I believe God sends miracles. 
And not just on the day of Pentecost. And not just because we fast so many days. God is a miracle worker. And sometimes it's in a miracle, even in the lack of our faith, just to show you he's God. Don't ever believe God's limited to your level of faith. He couples with your faith. He, he uses your faith. And when God wants to show he's God, at the Red Sea, those folks didn't have faith, did they? They were murmuring. They were complaining. They were getting ready to kill Aaron, kill Moses, and I suppose Miriam. God said, wait a minute. Moses, tell him to stand still. And I'm going to show you who God really is. You ever been in that situation? You don't know how you're going to make it. Don't think you're going to make it. But God said, you just stand still. You're going to see my salvation. Praise the Lord. I'm not only going to show you, I'm going to show Egypt that I'm God all by myself. They got all these God, ten gods. But I destroyed each one of those gods with each of the plagues I sent. And now I'm going to show you. This author's writing to these folks that want to believe. But they're looking at the circumstances. It looks so bleak. Praise the Lord. Every place I look, there's a reason for me not to believe. And then I, I, I listened to folks that I, I thought were going to encourage me. They just shake their heads. Say, be happy anyhow. Shout hallelujah anyhow. I can understand that thought. But I want more than just a hallelujah anyhow. I want the blessing. I want the miracle. I want the promise to be fulfilled. So he writes to them, cast not. Any fisher, men in the house, fisher women, cast not away your confidence. When you go fishing, you, you, you cast down. But to cast something away means you have it. He said, you got faith. You know God is who he says he is. Some messages are to non-believers. This is a message to believers. Some messages are to those that don't know anything about God. This is a message to those that know something about God. Anybody been walking with Jesus lately? Anybody got some testimonies? of your walk with God, how God is blessed, God is strengthened, God has made a way. Of the same look, there's going to be challenges, but cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Why, why must I keep it? Because something good is about to happen. Through your faith, through your commitment, through your willingness to wait on God, a great reward is coming. I like that phrase, a great reward. A recompense, a reward is coming. Then he gives them some instruction. While you're waiting, understand something. God is just saying to you, I've allowed the challenges to come. I've allowed the struggles to come. Maybe I ordered them, maybe I did, but I've allowed them. There's something God sends all by himself. There's other things God lets the devil. He let the messenger of Satan buffet Paul. No matter how it came, I let it come. Because I need you to understand you need some patience. Anybody ask for patience lately? Every time I do it, I start shaking my head. Because patience comes from struggles. Patience comes from going through something. Patience comes from situations. Patience comes after you have suffered a while. Oh, come on and praise him with me. Come on and give God the glory with me. After
after you have suffered, I shall establish and settle your strength and make ye perfect. Now, Paul did say this. He had to learn how to be a base and a bound. And you can't learn how to be a base and a bound, always having it your way. Sometimes you got to just wait on God. Oh, come on, praise him with me. I made a decision. It's a multiple decision. One, I want everything that God has for me. I want every promise to be fulfilled. Anybody going to agree with that? Just tell her I want everything. I want everything. I want more than a music shout. I want more than a Sunday morning shout. I want more than a testimony that he saved me. I testified that some 40 some years ago. I want to testify more than I got blood running warm in my vein. I want to testify, look and see what God has done for me. God stepped in when the world said it could not happen. God stepped in when the world said it was impossible. God stepped in when he said I was, he was going to step in. I want every promise God made to me. And when God made a promise, what did he say? My word will not go forth and return void. I'm not a man that I should lie or the son of man that I should repent. When I send it out, it shall accomplish. Saints of the most high, we have need of patience. But after doing the will of God, God said it's coming. It shall not tarry. That's why I'm telling somebody today, now is not the time to doubt. Now is the time to grab hold to faith and tell that demon of hell that trying to get you to compromise. I will not compromise. God made me a promise and I'm going to have everything he promised me. Saints of God, I came today to shout the victory. I said the victory. I didn't just come to shout. I know God's God and he deserves my praise. But I'm going to shout the shout of victory for God is getting ready. I can feel it in my sanctified soul. I can feel it right now. I can feel God walking around telling somebody, don't doubt now. Something good is about to happen. Can you hear what God is saying to us? I didn't say what I'm saying. I said what God is saying. Now is not the time to doubt. It's a time to grab hold of faith and declare it's about to happen. Tell somebody it shall not tarry. It shall not tarry. God sent it out and the devil trying to get you to walk away. The devil trying to get you to believe it's not going to happen. But I'm going to show that devil. I'm going to lift my voice and praise God and thank God. I'm going to lift my voice and cry, Jesus, Jesus, can I get a witness with me? Can I get somebody in Zoom land? In Facebook land, in YouTube land, in community refuge land, can I get somebody get to cry Jesus? And while you're crying Jesus, let him put his hands on you, put his arms about you, and tell you something good is about to happen. I can feel it all over me. Pray the Lord. I feel like running, but I'm gonna stand still and shout the victory. I'm gonna stand still and tell that devil, you're a liar, buddy. You're a liar. You try to get me to believe that God can't do it. But I made up in my mind, in my spirit, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Because I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. 
But let me prophesy to somebody. Let me prophesy. Your wait is not a long wait. In a little while. I believe that's what the Bible says. In a little while. After doing the will of God. The promise is coming. It shall not tarry. Oh, can I praise him, saints? Can I praise him? 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 But thank be to God who giveth us the victory. I don't need your permission. I don't need Lady Rubens permission. I don't need elders permission. Don't need the praise team permission. Don't need those sitting in your seats permission. Don't need the musician permission. And if they shut this tape off, I can still praise her. For God promised. I said God promised. I'll never leave you. God promised. I'll never forsake you. God promised. Oh, come on and praise him with me. Don't let me praise him all by myself. Don't let me praise him all by myself. Don't let me praise him all by myself. Come on, musicians. Let me hear you praise him. Come on, folks. Come on, singers. Any singers in the house. Not just the praise team, but any singers in the house that know how to sing a song of praise. No blues. No maybe. No, I don't feel like crazy again. But a song that declares God promised. God promised. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be alright, be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Hey, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Be alright, be alright, be alright. Jesus told me everything's gonna be alright. Oh, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus told me everything's gonna be alright. Oh, 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 Jesus told me everything's gonna be alright. Just hold on, just make it right. Be alright, be alright. Now I already gave Jesus my tithes and offering. But I took eight dollars out of my wallet. The number of a new beginning. Now, if you haven't given tithes and offering, you're going to bring that. For those on Zoom and faith, for those that are here, you can find eight dollars in addition to your tithes and offering. What do I mean by new beginning? I've allowed doubt. Oh, to rule me sometimes. Jesus told me I've allowed doubt to be take my joy. Oh, but this Jesus new beginning is saying to doubt, uh-uh, not in my life. God made me a promise, and I'm waiting until it happens. I'm going to keep my promise. All right. All right.
just realize why the Lord doesn't want me to sing even a little bit. If I could sing a little bit, I'd be singing at, at a C level. It'd be somewhat acceptable, but you would miss the A levels. <laughs> so Lord, I'm not going to even let you sing at all. So you don't get in way with those that I've given the gift to. Oh, Lord. Tuesday. What? Who is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, who is he and what's his assignment? And if you gave the eight, didn't give the eight, make a declaration. A new beginning without has no control in our life. That's our benediction. Send us off with Jesus song. Show me everything's gonna be all right. Oh, Jesus told me everything's gonna be all right. Oh, Jesus, Jesus told me everything's gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Yeah. Lord, 